Hello boys and girls, welcome back. So, following on from the last video where I had a look at six or seven of these, wasn't it? Um, these old kits from the 1950s. Decided to make this one. So, as you can see, P38J Lightning. And this kit is the first version that they did. Um, and this is from 1958. And... This kit carried on until about 1972, I think, um, when it was uh, retooled. But it was reboxed, rebagged several times in, in the meantime. So I think looking at Scalemates, um, which if you don't know, Scalemates is this brilliant website that tells you everything you, you need to know about every kit you can think of. Um, it looks like this was rebagged in 59. So this this version of this kit was only around for a year um so yeah i'm just going to make it like i would have done as a a nine-year-old <laughs> uh, i'm going to use acrylic paint instead of enamels because i don't like the smell of enamels and i can't be bothered to wait around for it all to dry um i may spray the bulk of it just to save a bit of time but i'll probably do mostly brush painting on this i should think but i don't know i think getting those wiggly lines might be tricky with my airbrushing skills so i might just go for a paintbrush on that but it's just going to be a quick build just for a bit of fun i've got um my third austin k2y ambulance to build um so this is just a quick, easy, hopefully, kit to chuck together, um, just for a bit of fun, like I say. Right then, so the first thing to do with the lightning is give it a wash, I think. Um, let's get it out of the bag first, shall we? I had a little look at it in the um, unbagging video. I'm pretty sure all the parts are here. Otherwise, a uh, bit of a waste of time, but we'll have another look. Here's the little slip with, you might like to buy all these other things. Please please go back to Woolworths. This little decal sheet, which is a bit yellowed, but it should be all right. And if it's not, well, uh, I can probably get a set of these off off the interweb somewhere. Um, yeah, we'll get, we'll give it a wash. Okay, so all the bits have been washed. A bit of soapy water in the sink. Um, something I never used to bother doing. Um, basically, I didn't know about it when I was a kid, so I'm using that as an excuse for why I paint and peel off sometimes. Uh, from what I understand, you don't really need to do it with modern kits because they don't use the same release agent stuff that these would have had on them, apparently. But I suppose it doesn't hurt, does it? Uh, you never know. Somebody in the factory might have had just eaten their cheese sandwich and when they put the frame in the box, got a bit of uh, cheesy goo on it or something. I don't know, but it doesn't hurt. I suppose it's a way of just checking over your parts, make sure there's no damage or warping or anything like that, perhaps. So I shall get these dried off. No, I'm wiping my dirty fingers all over it again. I suppose I should put some gloves on, but meh. Uh, yeah, get this all dried off and then we'll get on with the, uh, the build. Oh, sorry, dog growling at somebody out the window. Somebody's dared to walk past. Fishy, it's enough, darling. Fish cake, be quiet, darling. That's fish cake, our other poodle. She doesn't normally sit in here. She's normally either um, in with Sarah or in with mother-in-law. 
who she calls Grandpa, obviously. Um, but they've gone out for the day. She doesn't like being on her own. Fish cake, that is. So she's sitting in here with me. And um, obviously she has to growl at anyone who walks past. It's her job. Yes, we do have a dog whose name is Fishcake. So she's over by the window, keeping an eye on everything. And I've got Jacko, the other poodle, under the bench. And sitting by the radiator over there is, is Poppy, who's our old, gorgeous old spaniel. <coughs> so that's the cast of today's Today's, um, oh well. I'll go and get another one in a minute. Uh, anyway, shut up, back to the model. Right. Oh, this was one that was stuck together, wasn't it? I've forgotten about that. Ah, cunning plan. I need more brew, kettle, steam, steam that open. Yay, it looks like I know what I'm doing. Back in a moment. So, got a brew. And did, did my best with that. A little bit came off there, but I can read the words now. You can see the picture. I love these old instructions. None of the glossy booklet that you get nowadays with all the step by step. It's just, here's your bits. This is how you put it together. Ta da! Uh, right. Yeah, what was I saying about how good these were? So, even, you know, 50 years maybe before there was even a sniff of computers in, the, in this game, these were sort of, I suppose they must have been sort of carved somehow. I don't know. I don't know what the process was, but. Pretty amazing that they could come up with this and do it so cheap. So, instructions. Section one, cement propeller shafts into rear of propeller spinners and allow to dry. Part one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. Well, that sounds simple enough. Where's my knife gone? I've done it again, I've tied it up. Always a bad move. I suppose that's the only downside with these older kits is you get a little bit of flash on them. But being as this was the first version, uh, like I said, they. I knocked this one out for 14 years, I think. Um, but being as this was the first, first year of production, the moulds aren't worn out. So, uh, should be pretty good. So, I'm just cleaning that bit up so I can get them the distance right for this bit. Because I don't want it wobbling around. I don't want it too tight either. Just squeeze that in there. That's it. So now I can just put a dab of glue on that one. <sighs> Witchcraft. I've said it before, but it's blooming marvellous, this stuff. Would have... It would have been many a kitchen table in the 70s that would have survived longer if this stuff had been around. There's all that gloopy stuff everywhere that we used to get with the, the old uh, cement. Yeah, none of that. Nice and clean, this stuff, which is wonderful. Lovely jubbly, just let them dry over there. Right, what's next? Set 
section two, cement together upper and lower halves of centre section, parts five and six. Five, six. Mm, okay. Five and six. It's quite easy, isn't it? It's thin. Oops. Just having a look to see if it would be prudent to put any other bits in while I'm there. Uh, no, nah, you're not going to see inside it. You know, like normally when you when you build a a plane, you know, it's the two halves that go together. So you paint the inside of the the cockpit area. Looks like our little pilot man goes in that little hole. So if if I decide to paint in there, I'll do that after. So let's clip these up. Just because I'm going to put tape around it, I'm going to put the cement on first. Because what I found is if I try and tape it up, <coughs> there's somebody at the door. Just going to go and look out the window, see who that is. It was Amazon. <laughs> See what that is in a minute. Uh, I took my glasses off. Hang on, I can't see what I'm doing. And that all away. Just as you put the glue on, and you want to hold a bit together, someone comes to the door. Uh, yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, um, yeah, if I put the tape around it first, then put the extra thin in. It kind of does capillary action and gets under the tape and makes a mess. But you probably know that already. But I think I left it too long before I stuck these together. I could use normal cement, I suppose, couldn't I? Don't know why I'm using that. Here's the old fashioned stuff. Should hold it. I can always put a bit of extra thin on after once the, once this bit's dried. Yeah, I'll leave that alone. I'm happy with that. A leaf rustled. Perhaps somebody three miles away dropped a biscuit. Right, here we go. Section three. Place propeller shaft in position in one half of port fuselage marked P, and cement other half in place ensuring no cement comes into contact with propeller shaft, seven and eight. So seven and eight, marked P, P for port. Is there a P in there somewhere? Or will that be on the sprue? Because the, the, all these bits were loose in the bag, so. I can't see anything on the sprue to indicate P for port. Can't see any numbers on there at all. Mm -hmm. uh, no. I take it by that instruction that the port and the starboard fuselage halves are different. Uh, 
my eyes aren't brilliant, but I can't see a, a P in there. So it must have been on a bit of a bit of the frame. So we have to do some detective work. Let's see if there was any difference between the left and the right. I'm sure if you know about these things, you'll you'll know. Oh yes, well, well the left one had 64 rivets in the aft section and yeah you know what I mean um, let's use our eyeballs are they the same or are they different that looks the same to me Imagine if there was a difference, it would have been really obvious. Ah, there's an obvious difference. That's got a, a gizmo in it for presumably the leg for the the undercarriage. Um, right, does that show up on the picture? <laughs> ah, yes, okay. So, that will be number seven. So then the mirror of that will be the one without it. So that'll be the left pair. And then that'll be the right pair. Cool. Okie dokie. That would have been annoying. I'm going to do it with the wheels up. Some... Well, it's quicker. And when it's done, I'll have it on a piece of cotton from the ceiling. Yeah, I know, I'm a bit of a kid. But, um, yeah, when they're in flight, I like to have the wheels up. That's if the parts are good enough to close off the, the undercarriage bits. Because sometimes... They build them so that you have the wheels down. Uh, and then you try and do it with the wheels up and the, pit, the parts just don't fit. But we'll make it fit. We, we, have, we have the technology. So do I want to put the fuse elastic together yet? Or do I want to paint the, paint the bits first? Paint the propeller first. Put it on. That would be the sensible thing to do, wouldn't it? Uh, shall I, shall I, shall I, shall I? Now let's just glue it together. Glue it together and then see what happens. So just trim off the bits here. Just the slightest little bit of flash there so what's the oldest kit you've built then I don't remember even when I was a kid building one this old Probably did, unknowingly in a in a later box, probably. Uh, yeah, I mean, because I started in the early seventies, and some of these were. I mean, this was God, 15, 16 years old by the time I started making any. So they they probably reboxed or retooled most of their stuff by then. Um, but yeah, probably, I'm sure I made, must have made something from the 50s. It'll probably 
still knocking them out in the 90s. Yeah, so uh, have you got any of these ancient kits in your stash? Will you be tempted to actually build any of them? It's kind of two different hobbies really, isn't it? Collecting and and, and modelling itself, I think. See loads of people on the forums and on YouTube. And they got boxes and bo you know shelves packed with them and you know, far more kits than they're ever gonna make. But if you like collecting things, crack on. Nothing wrong with that. Plenty of uh, plenty of people collect things. Yeah, I've got probably half a dozen or a dozen, something like that, that I've picked up that really I'm never going to build. Um, and then I've got probably probably about the same again, probably you know, maybe sort of ten or so that I do definitely want to make. And. Uh, so far, I, I mean, I don't really keep an eye on the new releases out there too much from all the different companies. It's um, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll make what I want to make. Not necessarily if it's new, but uh, yeah, there's one coming up. Well, I've, I've, I've pre-ordered two of the Airfix ones for this year, which are yeah, unusual for me. Um, so one of them is the K, it's basically the, the Austin K2, but um, the, the pickup truck, you know, flatbed, whatever you call it, version. So roughly speaking, it's a, the same as the ambulance up the front, but with a, a flatbed on the back. <coughs> so I pre-ordered that. And then they've got a, a quick build London bus, which I've never built a quick build before. Yeah, you kind of think, oh, quick build, you know, that's a bit easy. That's for kids, you know, so that's a beginner thing. But I quite like a London bus. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think it'd be a bit of fun. Something different. It would look quite nice on the shelf. Hopefully. <laughs> and it'd be a fun little... One day build because there's no gluing, no painting. I think it's stickers instead of decals. But you know, why not have a bit of fun? I don't have to challenge myself with every kit, do I? Doesn't have to be hard work. Obligatory. There we go. Job done. That's that cleaned up. Mm. Hoping the glue's dry enough on the propeller not to. Not to. Oh. oh dear. Oh, it's all right. Take your notice. Every Friday at two o'clock, uh, the smoke alarms self test. I always forget about it, so I always, oh, the house is on fire, and, and then I remember. Yeah. yeah, we've got a bit of a smart home thing going on. So we've got Amazon Echoes controlling all sorts of clever things, and 
integrated fire alarms and burglar alarms and all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, it's all it's all clever stuff. And I kind of understand some of it. Right, close bags. Try and do this with um, la, 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 with the extra thin rather than tape if I can. Me, not too bad if the propellers don't turn. Right, so I've just clamped the other half of the body together. So put a bit of glue on that. Me, I'll do. Leave that over there for now. Right. What's next? Section four. Repeat the above procedure for the starboard fuselage. Done that. Section five. When port fuselage is dry, cement to centre section. After cementing in place, cement port tabs of tailplane into locking slot, locating slot in rear fuselage eleven. Uh, yeah, okay, so middle bit, left and right, tail, right, okay, I shall let those left and right sections dry for a minute first, <sighs> uh, I suppose I could put the wings together, is there anything I need to know about that? Uh, cement, uh, cement together upper and lower halves of port and starboard wings. That seems easy enough. Um, just clean them up a little bit first. Absolutely perfect. Can't complain with that. No gaps at all. Anything else I can get on with? Cement uh, together wings. Put the wings on. Locating cement air intakes into small holes on outside of fuselages. Okay, so that little thing there, and one on that side. Yeah. Those little bits there, which look symmetrical. Yeah, no, they don't even put. They didn't even put the numbers on the frames here. <sighs> Weird. <laughs> uh, so lake, locate holes on the outside of you. There we go. So there's the hole. Me yeah, might as well. Make sure it fits in the hole first. Okay. 
Okay, that's a nice fit. Oh. That looks about right to me. That should have had a little while dry. So let's get these bits together. Just had a text, the wife's on her way back from Tesco. And she wants hand with the shopping. <coughs> so I've only got a few minutes to put this together. Just to remind myself the the little notch for the undercarriage goes inboard. So so that would be that one, the left. So that needs to go on there. fit very nice no jiggery poker you required yeah just a little bit of a raised area there so that bit's a bit higher than it should be but I should just make sure I've got it around the right way. So the notch is there. Yeah, that looks right. Hmm. I wonder if the other one's the same. one's better that one's almost flat that one it's got a bit of a lip on it but yeah not gonna worry about that it's not that bad and then will the wings line up nicely as well oh very nice Jacko's just sticking his nose on my lap yeah. It's a little bit wobbly, so I'll just have to put a bit of tape on that to line it up. But it's starting to look like a plane. And then I've got to fit the tail in as well. So, sort of persuade that in like that. <laughs> Even they still turn. <laughs> I haven't glued them up yet. <laughs> Give it time. I'm sure I'll find a way of sticking them on. Uh, should I put the wings on now? Mm. Yeah, why not? I'll use a bit 
a thicker glue. Give me a bit of time to, to play with it, get some tape on it. just doing that by eye so it looks straight with the the inner part of the wing so yeah hard to hard to show it on camera but that looks about right okay I'll just use a bit of uh, extra thin on that one because that seems to be Seems to be staying put. Yeah, a bit of a gap there. Right. Yeah, okay, got to leave that for a little while. Oh, looking good. Okay, so I've given it about an hour, put the shopping away, had a brew. So let's see what this is like now. Should have set quite nicely. Yeah, I mean, the, the fit isn't perfect, but what do you expect? So there's a little bit of a gap there. All in all, I'm impressed. Seen a lot worse. I mean, I could put a bit of filler in there, couldn't I? Shall I bother? By the time I've painted it, Nah, don't worry about it. Right, okay. Let's leave that on there. Right, what's next? Uh, wings on, air intakes. Uh, all right, okay, put the wheels on, which we're not doing. So, find the bits to cover up the holes. <coughs> so Sarah and her mum got back from the shops so I gave man put, put the shopping away and what was at the top of the bag but 10 packets of Tesco dark chocolate digestive biscuits <sighs> she's good to me Slightly wider at one end than the other, so I think the wide end goes at the front. So probably sit something like that. Looks about right. So put a bit of tape on that. We shall see. So does that look like it'll fit in there? Ooh, ooh. Not looking bad. Yeah, it doesn't sit quite right. If it was open, yeah, fine, but 
Yes, it's way too low. But maybe when I persuaded it to fit, I might be able to get it in. Yeah, it's in, but that side looks okay. But Oops. That side's sitting a bit low. But, mm, yeah, not brilliant. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. While it's there, I'm just going to slap some glue in and call it done. I'm having fun, and that's what it's about. Persuading a 65 year old piece of plastic to sit next to another 65 year old piece of plastic. So now we've got the just the front wheel, nose wheel to do. Ah, uh, the, oh, there it is. Still on the frame. Look, cool. Hmm, this is going to take a bit of bodging because it's got a hole there to put the the wheel in. We don't want that. So it's going to get in the way, so I'm going to have to cut that off. I wonder if my snippers will get in there. I'm getting the snippers just in that bit. Oh, yeah. I might just do it. Let's have a go. So just a little bit of filing around there, around the edges. It's it's kind of just plopped into position there. So before I go any further, get a bit of glue in there. Again, there's whacking great gaps around it, but yeah. This is gonna be nine year old modeling. Right, what's next? Uh, undercarriage doors, nose wheel, near. Uh, oh, it does tell you that you can have it with the undercarriage retracted. Yeah, tricky. <laughs> right, what's next? Yeah. So, glue the remainder of the bits to the lap. Okay. Right, so I'll just get these bits of the tail on. I'll leave the the um the pilot and the canopy off until it's painted. 
Uh, just because that would be a lot easier. Rather than masking it all up. Because I'm not very good at masking. <clears throat> My eyes aren't very, very good at close-up stuff. And it's flipping fiddly. So, which is which? Does it matter? Let's have a look. Same, same, I think. Get the loaf on and get the tape in. Actually, I'm not sure that needs any tape holding itself in all right. I think I'll just be careful not to knock it for a minute. Should be okay. Right then, so drop tanks. Doesn't want to quite line up, but I'll just cut that locating peg off and then it should, yeah, that's it, that'll do. Bit of sticky stuff. Yeah, it's a bit ropey, isn't it? <laughs> is it might. It's a bit of fun. What else is there? Uh, just the nose and the guns. Canopy pilot. Hmm. Pop, persuade that to go on, shall we? I'll put the guns in later, I think. I wonder if there hadn't been such a thing as Airfix or any of the other plastic model companies. I sort of wonder what what we would have done with our spare time. Would we have been more productive or Board or troublemakers? Would Meccano have sold more? That's not bad. Quite a nice fit, that. I 
or maybe Lego. Had a bit of Lego. But never did Meccano. It was a bit expensive. But, uh, I don't know, just somehow it didn't appeal. But um, yeah, quite enjoyed me Lego. Although you've seen the prices of that now. Bonkers. Right, I do. It's taking shape, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. That one's gone a bit wobbly. I could always put a blob of glue in there later, can't I? Okay, I think that's about ready for some paint. Right, let's do that. So, uh, it's had a coat of primer, which came out a little bit patchy. Um, got a little bit there that's sort of crazed, so just give that a rub down. It shows up the panel gaps now. So, if I wasn't just chucking this one together, a bit of filler, a bit of sanding, could have sorted all them out. But this is going to be, like I said, built like a 10 year old would. And when I was that age, I wouldn't have filled gaps. I'd have just glued it together and painted it. So um, I'll see if this little bit will come off without ruining it. It's just one little bit, just want to get that off. Yeah, I'm not sure. I've used this Vallejo primer a couple of times, quite a few times, and um, it does seem to take a long time to dry. This is this has been on uh, nearly two days now since I sprayed this because I didn't do anything yesterday because we were out. Went to see Maisie Adam. Um, very funny. Um, yeah, this primer, it's, it seems to stay a little bit sticky underneath. Sort of, it feels dry, but then as soon as you sort of rub it down, it's a bit sticky. Might need to try a different primer, I think. Um, and it did this underneath. I don't know why I only did that underneath, not on top. It was the same, same mix. Um, and I, and I'd, I'd cleaned it all. For some reason, when I went to do that, it's got this sort of patchy thing going on. But again, not going to worry about that. So, looked up the paint, and it seems to be 889 model colour, which it calls olive brown, but it's really green, I think. Hope it's, hope it is. That seems to be the right one for the top. Um, and then this is the nearest I can find in my stash for the for the underside. 050 light grey because um, this is such an old kit that they didn't even have numbers for the paints then all it says here is light grey underside olive green upper surface etc uh, somewhere I've actually got an airfix light grey uh, I wonder where it is. There it is. Yeah. Oh, dove grey, not quite. Look at that. Might, might stir up. I <laughs> don't think I'll try and use it. That's classic, that is, isn't it? I can remember my, my brothers, who were quite a bit older than me, when they were doing their kits, they had some of these. I remember, I mean, I was a toddler and I remember seeing these little glass bottles. <laughs> anyway, uh, right, let's get on with this one then. So what I'm going to do is spray the, the light grey on, so all the underside. And I'm because it's got the wiggly 
pattern down the side. I'm not going to try and be clever and mask it or anything. So I'm going to just brush paint the green on once the, the grey's dry. Okay, right, let's get on with that. Uh, and then the bottom side's now had a coat of grey, which has kind of covered most of it up. There's a few little bits there, but we'll put that down to weathering, I think. <laughs> um, so now I'm just going to brush paint the top because I can't be bothered to mask it up. Um, my guide picture for painting is, is that. So wibbly wobbly lines, roughly halfway down the, the fuselage, up over the wing. So all the top surfaces, wibbly wobbly lines. Uh, I'll do the canopy pilot and put the guns and any aerials or whatever on, on after I've done that. So uh, yeah, let's get painting. Mm. Right, let's see what this one looks like. Ah, uh, that's more like it. Yeah, that's that's an olive green in my in my head. So yeah, Russian green. Who knew? Right. Uh, so that's model air, so it doesn't need thinning as much. Uh, I'll just put a drop in there. Maybe two. Still getting the hang of all this. Uh, all this modern paint. Oh, it's all, it's all witchcraft to me. Used to be use a screwdriver to pry open the tin that dried up, stab through the skin on the top of the paint, and then scrape whatever little bits of extra thick blobby enamel out the bottom of the tin and make that go as far as you can. Happy days. Yeah, so it's thinned it down a little bit, but don't want it too thin, but don't want to leave brush marks in it if I can help it. So let's just dive in, shall we? So wibbly wobbly lines. Right. <laughs> it's awkward. So from the front of the wing, about halfway down the propeller. Okay, so about there. Yeah, that's roughly right, isn't it? Haven't done any camouflage for ages. This is all. All coming back to me. <laughs> Happy days. A bit more awkward uh, on the other side because can't see as well, obviously. Uh, there's still some people, obviously, that use enamels. But, uh, I think I probably would have done, except I really don't like the smell. I can't really deal with um, solvents anymore. Anything like that makes me cough now. Uh, I'm fine as a kid, but as I'm getting older, I may even get hay fever now, which I never had as a kid. Um, but yeah, any sort of solvents or uh, particularly bleach, um, which, you know, I suppose that's a solvent, um, just makes me cough and cough and cough. 
So on the odd occasion where I uh, get the spray tin out of, well, the only one I've got is acrylic varnish. I can only do a few seconds and then I have to leave the room. And yet spraying with the acrylics from an airbrush, absolutely fine. So, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, I, I grew up with the enamels, but didn't have any choice. That's all there was. Um, but yeah, they're, they're not very eco-friendly and uh, not very good for your health. So um, I'm quite happy to go over to acrylics. Yeah, pros and cons in both, aren't they? But I do like how acrylics don't stink and they dry quick. And, uh, yeah, good stuff. Rinse them out under the tap. If it all goes wrong, just wash it off. If you get it on your on your shirt, it comes off in the wash. All good stuff. And the annoying thing is I've got a whole load of enamel paints. <laughs> well, they're probably all dried up now. So uh, last night I posted three other videos. Um, not that I was intending to do three, but it was on three different versions of the Harrier. Uh, so feel free to go and have a look at those if you haven't seen it already. Um, I just quite like doing little unboxing videos and did one and that led to the next and that led to the next and um, yeah if you've uh, if you've seen them there's a few nice little comments on there so very good of you thanks very much uh, yeah, it was a fun little thing to do Colouring in, yay!
get this first coat on and then although it's starting to dry already I'll give it an hour or two and then I'll come back and do the second coat because I have to go and feed the dogs It's lovely, we went out today, we had an exciting trip to the DIY shop to choose a, a front door. Um, went for a coffee, got back, and it was nearly five o'clock and it was still light. It was like, oh, it seems like ages. It's finally, um, finally a bit of springtime. middle of February, so, you know, still a bit early in the year, but, oh, it's lovely. I think the, when is it the clocks change? Can't be that long now. Quite a ropey technique I've got there, isn't it? Just slop it on, see what happens. Yeah, a bit out of practice. But it's authentic. Eight-year-old me. That's pretty good for eight-year-old me. Well, that looks pretty ropey, doesn't it? <laughs> <clears throat> right, that'll do for an hour or two. Uh, see you in a bit. Okay, so it's had a good couple of hours now to dry. Looks awful, doesn't it? But I was just looking at it in the light and it looks smooth. You can't sort of see the raised brush marks. It's a tiny bit there. Um, so I'll try another coat, see what happens. What's the worst that can happen, eh? So, yeah, can't even pick up a paintbrush now. It's silly. All right. It's the same again. Just a little tiny bit of thin is in there.
but it's a lot better. But still, as you can see, a lot of brush marks in it. So, uh, give it a bit. No, stop touching it, make it worse. Uh, I'll give that an hour or two to dry off, and then I'll see how awful it looks after that. Mm. Okay. See you in a bit. Okay, so that's another, had about another hour to dry. So it's still quite streaky. So um, I'm hoping this is the last coat. Hmm, quite a surprise with that. I thought it'd be much more ropey than it is. I mean, it's, it, it's quite ropey, as you can see, but I think if I'd put the effort in, I could have made that a bit better. Could have tried some of that uh, retarder. So it takes a bit longer to dry, so I can see what I'm doing. But, uh, it's all a learning curve, isn't it? But I'm not even... That is definitely not eight-year-old me. I am not covered in paint. So at least I've learned to keep it on the brush, and not, not on me. Well, that'll do for tonight. <laughs> right, I shall say goodnight. See you folks. Thanks for watching. Okie dokie. So it's all had a good dry. Um, it, yeah, it's not brilliant. There's a few streaks in it. Which actually, looking at the screen, look a lot worse than in real life. You can just make out a few little lines there. Which, ideally, I'd rub that down and give it another one. But, yeah, live and learn. I think from a distance it will look alright. Not sure what that distance is, but hey ho. Um, all I've done is I've just cemented the two machine guns in the nose and this little area underneath. 
So I've got to paint the pilot to give the canopy a quick mask. Put a little, little bit of paint on that. Uh, so yeah, nearly there. So I shall whiz on with that now. Leave that face down because that aerial's sticking up now. So let's get our little pilot figure done. I'm just going to slop a bit of bit of the same green on him, I think, um, and then perhaps a what colour were their helmets or flying caps rather? Leather, probably leather, wasn't it? Uh, oh, hang on, I forgot me palette. <sighs> yeah, I'll stick a bit of brown on his on his head. Uh, just gonna whiz through this now because I just want to get you finished. I'm at that impatient stage. Right, little bit of the green. I need a little drop of that. So, there are proper tools out there for holding parts, but blue tack always seems to go down well. I'm not going to do this to any great degree of skill or accuracy because. You won't see him anyway, because once this is finished, it's going on a piece of cotton from the ceiling. Because quite lucky, uh, our craft room slash spare spare bedroom is well, the whole house really. It's like a late Victorian thing with the really high ceilings, so. I'm in that lucky position that I can hang them on bits of cotton from the ceiling and no one bashes their head on them. Because, uh, yeah, Dad, <laughs> I keep mentioning him. He's, um, he had a bit of a problem with with my, uh, my aircraft because we lived in an ordinary sort of house and he was six foot six so my lumps of plastic hanging off the ceiling were a bit of a hazard messed up the messed up my mask in there a little bit mm. yeah it's not gonna be perfect is it nothing on this kit is perfect because I made it and I don't do perfect I do Having a bit of fun with a 60 odd year old lump of plastic. Yeah, that'll do. I might give that another coat in a minute. Maybe I won't, I don't know. Um, so I've got a little bit of black to do on the machine guns. And I think the aerial is black as well, I don't know. It might be grey, but it's going to be black today. Let's have a little paintbrush gone. I have to get me some better paintbrushes. Uh, there it is. Um, yeah, tiny, tiny one. So I went out today and picked up those kits from a really nice chap over in the other side of Durham. And uh, they were his grown-ups, well, his son's kit, kids that were in the loft. His son's grown up and moved away, so he's clearing them out. And um, Yeah, nice to get hold of those. So I'm going to do an unboxing video of those, those four kits. Because they're quite interesting. There's nothing, spe you know, they're not really, really, really rare, but they're un unusual. They're not, they're not things that they sold masses and masses of. And they're, um, they're not kits I've had before. 
So even if no one else is interested, I'd like to see what's in the boxes. And if anyone else is interested, that's brilliant. Oh, propellers. Yeah, no, I better do them than I. Duh. Look a bit strange in grey. Uh, pick a brush. It's only just an old bit of packing, but it's a nice soft base, so you can put things down without breaking them. And you can poke cocktail sticks into it when you're uh, in the mood for poking cocktail sticks into pieces of polystyrene. Which is something we always do. Yeah, we all do it from time to time, don't we? Uh, right, so apart from putting the canopy on, the, I'm going to call that weathering. Uh, apart from putting the canopy and the drop tanks and stuff on, I think that's about finished. <coughs> uh, let's put another little bit of green on there. I know this is going to look awful because I've, yeah, I've paid very little attention to it. But, yeah. This is what I was like as a kid. This is so me. Start off with all good intentions and then get impatient and rush things. <sighs> Um, a little bit of flesh, flat flesh, there we go. Um, not sure if I've even used this one yet. I think I'm, I must have done. Have I? Have I even opened it? Mm, maybe. Give it a shake. It smells funny. Right, give me that a shake. That's all we're getting. And a bit of brown for his noggin. Uh, what brown shall I use? Mud brown, that looks reasonable.
if you can see how flat his little head is. It's wide, flat, and squished. Maybe it's the G force. Ah, that too. <laughs> right. Uh, what to do now? Um, I suppose we could poke him in his little house, couldn't we? to sit on. Glue, 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 there it is. That's it, I'm not even going to wait for him to dry. Just chuck him in. Okay, so it's had overnight to, for the uh, little varnish to dry. So um, yeah, just a quick, quick squirt of the the rattle tin stuff, just to give it a little bit of a shine. In the hope that these are going to stick. So sixty-five-year-old decals, do they work? Let's find out. Um, So I'm going to start with one of the big stars and stripey things on that wing there. Here goes. Right, let's see if that comes off the paper. sporting chance I'll put a bit of decal fix on it micro sole rather micro set that's the word oh I'm making the right pigs here isn't I Just looking at the scrap of paper that, where is it, this thing. So just getting an idea where the decal should fit just from that, because that's all you get. Uh, it looks about right. Um, yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, pretty much it. Wow, I'm just amazed. 65 years old, crikey. Okay, let's get the rest on. Yeah, somebody um, in the comments on one of the 
and when I did the sort of unbagging of this. I mentioned that Series 2, and they, they'd only, they'd never seen a Series 2 kit in a, in a bag. And thinking about it, I, I kind of had it in my head that it was only the Series 1s that came in bags, but obviously not. I don't know, I'm not, not really a historian. But, uh, yeah, every day's a school day. So which wing is it? That one. It's only because that can cover up that little blemish there. <laughs> Sticky. can see a bit of yellowing on there now. So, what's next? So we've got these serial numbers. Go on the inside of the tail. Oh, so good. I had any trouble with these. Cool bit. Oh, you're lovely. Once they float off, you never know if you're going to get them back again or whether when you try and grab them, they're going to wrinkle up. Actually, just look at that one. Could you see some little tiny cracks in it? Oops, let me get a bit closer. Just, don't know if you can even see it. Just little tiny cracks in there. So is um, doing the decals your favorite part of the build? I think it's probably mine, I'm not sure. Painting I'm not terribly good at. Um, when it goes well, love it, but more often than not, it, it, it's a bit ropey. But so about putting the decals on, it's kind of, it's like the finishing touch. Very satisfying. That one's sitting on okay. It's 
like because it's on a slight curve, it, it, it wants to straighten out. I'm hoping they'll just stay put for now. Get the rest on. So in the old days before Microsoft and similar things, what would I have done to get that deck to sit? I'd have probably put a bit of glue on it. Which of course would have looked awful, but yeah. put a bit of cellar tape over it. phone tomorrow because uh, the contract's run out and it's actually cheaper to get a new phone than keep the one I've got just here um, so I've gone for one that's got a supposedly a much better camera on it so what I'm hoping I can do is I can have this one higher up and still focus it but not this one you know what I mean have the camera taking this view, but from a higher vantage point. But yeah, I'm not all that techie, so I don't know if I can do that or not. I'll find out tomorrow. Well, that's it, that's all the tackles on. Sort of. This is just the persuasion of trying to get them to stay on. So there I was talking about the cameras a minute ago, and the SD card filled up, and the camera went off. So I had to go back and delete stuff, because I haven't got enough memory on this one. And now Poppy's scratching at the door to tell me she wants a dinner, so I'm just going to get this uh, micro sol on here. I hope that that sticks it. Oh, it's still moving. It's just these ones here because they're on a curve. They don't want to sit. Right, 
Barry, put it down and walk away. So they're still kind of sticking up at the top there. But I'm hoping it will just soften and stick itself down. I'm going to walk away. I'm going to have my dinner, watch a bit of telly. And come back tonight. And uh, hopefully it'll all have settled down and I can just give it a, a coat of matte varnish and it'll be virtually done. Right, I'll see you in a bit. Bye. Okay, dokie, so it's been 24 hours since I put the decals on. So, can you get away with 65 year old decals? Well, that one wrinkled up a little bit and it was a bit yellow, that one. I did put on the Microsol and Micro set, but it's still a bit crinkly. And these on the front, they eventually settled down. But what I did, what I, what I should have used first was this liquid decal film, which, as he says, restore old decals. And you're supposed to paint this on to the decal sheet first, wait for it to dry. Uh, I'll allow 15 minutes dry in time and then apply like a normal decal, and it kind of holds it together. But I forgot about that. So I. I, I tried using a bit of that on here afterwards because what it was just peeling, peeling off, and that kind of worked. Tried the same on here. This one came apart a little bit, but kind of stuck. These it eventually settled down, but the, this one's still lifting off a little bit. These ones went on perfectly. Didn't need anything on those. Um. Yeah, slightly peeling that one. And that one wrinkled a little bit. So, yeah. I reckon if I'd remembered to put this stuff on first, I might have got away with it. But, other than that, shoddy paintwork. That's down to me, obviously. No one else is involved. Um... Pilot sort of falling asleep there, and he left dozing off. Yeah. <laughs> I really have built this like an eight year old, um, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, this is a 65 year old kit, like I said. It, it's the combination of it being old and from a time when accuracy wasn't that great and my lackadaisical efforts in this. It's not gonna win any shows, but I've thoroughly enjoyed it. It, you know, you can have these fantastic new kits that fit together like a dream and they're brilliant and nothing against those, but sometimes you just wanna relive that that time when you were just gluing things together, slapping some paint on, putting some decals on, and in my case, hanging it on a piece of cotton from the ceiling, which is the one thing I've got left to do, other than put the canopy and the, the drop tanks on. So I'm just gonna quickly glue those bits on. Um, I suppose I should throw a bit of, bit of varnish on it, but it's not really going to make any difference, is it? it nah, forget it. Um, yeah, it's going to glue those bits on, get a bit of cotton, stick it on the ceiling, job done. Well, here it is in its final resting place, <laughs> hanging off the ceiling on a bit of cotton, just where every 65-year-old Airfix model should end up. There it is. Well, that was fun. Enjoyed that. Right, let's see what's next. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you on the next plastic adventure. Bye.